Pumped to uh, get started here. Just wanted to say greetings to our Second Baptist family here in Houston, Texas. Uh, glad you've taken time to join us for our third installment of what we call Eagle Vision. Uh, Eagle Vision speaker series uh, format just to try to bring encouragement and uh, you know inspiration to our Second Baptist family. We want to provide good information from literally some of the best in the business that are doing it at the highest level and uh, hopefully our, our parents and our, and our athletes can uh, learn and grow and be encouraged. But uh, we've had NFL players, World Series champs, college athletes, and two great guests, great guests uh, on our call tonight to talk about uh, what I believe is a very important topic. And uh, I wanna say welcome to our panelists. Welcome everyone, thanks for being here. Thank you, thanks for having me. Well, yeah, Coach thanks. Massioli, or Coach <laughs> Mass, as we call him, uh, the Director of Sports Performance here at Second Baptist School in Houston, uh, has personal connections with both of our guests. So I'm going to let Nick, I'm going to let you kind of make our introductions and uh, let everybody know who we're, who we're chatting with this evening. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, Coach Walker. I appreciate it. And uh, you're welcome, everyone that's listening. Um, you know, I'm excited to have these two uh, guests on uh, this, uh, this call right now and just sort of tell us a little bit about nutrition and just what's going on in their lives right now. Uh, like Coach Walker said, I have personal connections with them. Um, for the first person, actually was a, a former co-worker of hers, um, and uh, that is Allison Maurer. And she uh, and I worked at the Pittsburgh Pirates with each other. And so Allison right now is the uh, Director of Nutrition and Fueling for the Pittsburgh Pirates and works uh, with all their athletes. And even before that, she actually worked at the University of Tennessee for nine years um, and could you tell us a little bit about that, Allison, uh, exactly what you were doing in at uh, University of Tennessee, what sports you were working with, and what kind of role that was like? Yeah, so at Tennessee, um, I was the director of sports nutrition there, um, and I oversaw the nutrition program for all the sports, all the athletes, but primarily I spent a majority of my time with football. So, um, you know, obviously that's a big animal in the SEC, so spent most of my time working with those athletes, but yeah, anything from body composition testing, um, you know, individual counseling. One of the things I really did enjoy when I was there was the eating disorder counseling that I would do and just body image stuff. And I know we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, but yeah, so that was a really, really good time in college sports. Very cool. Yeah, no, I mean, big school, SEC school, like UT, <laughs> that, that's gotta be sick. <laughs> yeah, then, uh, game days are pretty sick. I know, yeah. right? Yeah, I can't, I can't even imagine. Um, and then you even were at uh, the uh, University of Colorado. You actually were a strength coach, and then you also did um, sports uh, dietitian there. So, I mean, you've sort of been all over the place, and you're currently even working at a, a local high school just outside of Knoxville teaching nutrition. So, you know, you're quite the Leonardo da Vinci of our time. You're doing everything. <laughs> um, but, you know, just tell us a little bit, Allison, about, you know, how life is for you right now. Obviously, we're in a, a unique situation with the quarantine um, it sort of seems like we're getting on the other side of things, but you know, how's, how's life with the Pirates been? What have you, how have you been interacting with your athletes and uh, just things at home? Yeah, so during this time, I mean, you know, the only thing we can do is a lot of just online content. So um, with our Instagram, our Bucko Fuel Instagram, we've done tons of different cooking demos and that's been a way to really be able to connect with the players um, through that. Cause we'll try to do, we've tried to do different like, competitions and just um, ask them different questions via social media just to kind of keep them interested. We also have um, a platform, an internal platform called the High Performance Lab. And so players and staff get on that. And so that is has a wide range of everything from mental conditioning, um, strength and conditioning, athletic training, nutrition. We have all different components. And so uh, players and staff, they can watch different sessions. So we have our cooking demos on there. We have nutrition education handouts. I have all my nutrition lectures that I've done um, and just working on some new stuff. We even have stuff for staff as far as like nutrition information about cholesterol, diabetes, that sort of thing. And then with the major league players too, just touch and base with them um, as often as, you know, it's to ask someone often like, how are you feeling is, you know, after a while it's like, I'm fine. <laughs> So finding that balance of like checking in with them, but not, but making it intentional and genuine versus just, I have to check this box this week. So, um, but it's been fun to just reach out and find out what some of the guys, how they're, you know, some of them have new babies at home and, you know, asking for pictures and, you know, and, you know, has she started crawling yet and stuff like that. So, you know, it doesn't always have to be like food related, but then, um, with the high school, we actually start workouts on Monday. So we're, football is going to get started 
um, in the weight room and on the field and stuff. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to do some stuff. <laughs> I'm ready for baseball for sure. <laughs> yeah, but in the meantime, yeah. I'll take football. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, and uh, we're, hey, down in Houston, we're looking forward to getting back to it soon, hopefully. Um, so we know where you're coming from. But yeah, that's so awesome, Allison. It seems like you're doing great right now. And uh, let me introduce number two. Now, number two uh, is a really good friend of mine. And I actually was had the privilege of being a college teammate of his um, back at Westchester University, which is just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, about 30, 40 minutes west of Philadelphia. And his name's Joe Wendell. Um, currently, he is a uh, infielder for the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, was fortunate enough to play on the playoff team uh, last year. Um, and he's played two years with them in uh, the big league club, which has been really exciting, especially for me as a friend to see him do that. But prior to that, you know, um, Joe uh, and I were teammates at Westchester. Um, and Joe, actually, if I remember correctly, were you a exercise science major as well? I was, yeah. Yeah, exercise science and, and pre-physical therapy was my major. So uh, I like to think had I not gotten um, – had I not gotten drafted to play baseball, I would have gone to uh, to physical therapy school and pursued my career there. There you go. Any <clears throat> any chance maybe that's uh, still not out of the question? It's it's definitely still on the table. I'll have to cross that bridge when I get there. Hopefully, I have a couple a uh, couple more good years in me baseball wise. Um, yeah, but, hopefully a quality decade. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about <laughs> the decade, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully a good bit longer, um, and then we'll we'll kind of see when we get to that. Good, good. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and so, like I said, me and Joe were uh, teammates. Uh, Joe got drafted um, in 2012 and has been playing professional baseball ever since. So, Joe, you know, um, you know, how, was, how are things been with you? Obviously, you're, you're still playing the game right now, and, you know, we're still looking to see some baseball come about this year, and we're praying for it. You know, how has it been for you during quarantine? Have you still been keeping sharp, doing some different things, and how's the family doing? Yeah, uh, family's doing good. Thanks for asking. My, my wife just popped her head in and told me that uh, that both of our children are down for the night. So um, there you I, go. Think, I think yeah. she is a real um, the MVP tonight of this, of this <laughs> here. Um, but no, I, I'm doing good. Um, we came uh, back to our off season house, which is in Pennsylvania, uh, you know, like Nick had said earlier. And uh, yeah, right, right now we're honestly in a holding pattern. And I think uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to baseball as much as as much as everybody else is is looking forward to watching baseball. Um, but that being said, this um, this time is is crucial time. I mean, it's it's an opportunity for uh, for me as a player to continue to get better. Um, and I think that that's kind of the way that I've taken this um, this quarantine. Um, and I've just looked at it as like an extended off season. Um, it's it's a little bit more time for me to get faster. It's a little bit more time for me to get stronger, to improve my skills, um, you know, hitting, fielding, throwing, all those things. So um, I've been doing a lot to stay sharp. Uh, thankfully, I have a, a small little gym here. It's not much, but I have a I have a squat rack. I have dumbbells. Um, you know, I have kettlebells and. Uh, and a rowing machine so between all those I can get a pretty darn good workout in and uh, you know I've been able to throw and hit with my brother so it, you know it's definitely been a priority for me um, this this time of resting kind of that we're, we're all experiencing or, or maybe not everybody's experiencing but all of us baseball players are um, so so I've enjoyed um, you know spending some extra time with my family um, but also uh, trying to stay focused and keep the mentality of we're going to play this year and I'm going to use this as an opportunity to continue to get better. That's awesome, Joe. Yeah, that's, that's so cool that you're, you're staying with it. And definitely for all of us, it's a unique time. Um, you know, uh, I know you're an avid hunter as well. Um, have you been able to get out and shoot the bow a little bit? Uh, you know what, but nothing's really in season right now. Um, so, so I haven't been out hunting, but I have taken my son who just turned two fishing a couple times, which, um, usually ends up he just um he just holds the the, the rubber worms and w runs around the pond and i just chase him and we try not to get attacked by geese um but it's fun yeah that sounds actually a lot like me when i fish and that's currently <laughs> uh, um that's awesome joe um yeah well guys that's that's our uh, panelists for uh today and you know once again we're excited to talk a little bit about nutrition um both of these people have a wealth of knowledge and so we're going to have a couple questions that are going to come yeah. their way. And then once again, for everyone that's listening, feel free to push some questions through and we'd love to have them answered as best we can. Yeah. Hey, a, gr a great topic. And uh, we have two experts in Allison who, who works, you know, in the field of nutrition and fuel, which is really cool. And then uh, Joey, who, you know, was a 
skinny high school athlete and then uh, a big time college college player and now a professional athlete so you would have just great perspective about you know how your mentality on food and nutrition and habits has changed as your your body has really become your you know your source of work so to speak so uh, really excited to dive dive into this and listeners I think you're gonna really enjoy the content I got my pen and paper ready so so let's get started here uh, Allison first question to you um, you know such a unique field talk a little bit about like how in the world you became passionate about helping everybody else understand what goes in their body, why it works, how it works, and how important it is. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. It is very unique and it's a very young profession. Um, it's about 20 years old, which mm. seems probably old for some people, but um, I've been in it for 16 years now. So, um, you know, starting off when it was first really fresh, um, but I was, I was always interested in sports. Um, I was never like a you know, superstar athlete by any means, went to college. I, you know, was like the intramural champ. Like I was just really <laughs> average at intramural sports and so, but I loved it. Um, then I went to um, Atlanta, um, went to Georgia State University to do my dietetic internship. Um, and I just really didn't love any of the rotations. And my last rotation was um, a sports nutrition rotation at Georgia Tech. And that was back in 2003. So, I mean, sports nutrition didn't exist back then really. Right. Um, you would, if you would tell someone that that's what you wanted to do, they'd be like, oh, that's fun. That sounds like a fun hobby, you know, and like, <laughs> it's not a real job. And so, um, I was able to work under Leah Thomas and, uh, Rob Skinner and just got really passionate about it and started to really, cause I'm, I'm a runner. That's kind of like my okay. drug of choice, I guess you could yeah. say from the exercise standpoint. Um, and so just interested more in how you know, food and fuel would help with my running and just seeing how that translated for the athletes that I was working with. And then, um, yeah, so that's, and then 2004, I got the job at the University of Colorado um, and still like sports nutrition wasn't a real job yet. And so kind of the deal was, hey, we need a strength coach, but we really want a dietitian too. Will you do both? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I've never lifted weights before ever. Of course I'll do it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so that's how it started. And then, you know, I spent three years there and the profession really started. I mean, back then there might be like one new job every two years or so. Um, and right about 2009, 2010, it started to explode. And so, um, so yeah, that's just kind of yeah. now, I mean, I think every there's only two. Most yeah. private high schools, everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, high school is definitely the next place that I want to dive into as far as the meeting the need um the need is there but i think it's a lot of schools just aren't really ready for it yet because they don't really know what it looks like so and we saw that in college too colleges weren't ready for it back in 2005 2006 until yeah, yeah. you know but it'll get there okay when i was learning how to coach i figured you have to tell them <laughs> what they're going to say say it and then tell them what you said so if we have some young listeners right now like what's the what's the one thing that a young athlete should kind of be listening to pick up over the course of this discussion as we just start to dive into it. Whew. It's from a nutrition standpoint. Yeah. Just um, food. Man. I, okay. The biggest thing is food is fuel. Like <laughs> I cannot stand when people say healthy eating drives me nuts because healthy eating makes me think I'm on a diet. That's not fun <laughs> for anyone. So um, fuel, you're fueling for your, Perfect. I don't care if you have to take a test or if you have a state championship, like Excellent. that's what you want to focus on. All right. You're going to be listening for that. All right, Joe, <laughs> um, talk a little bit about just how your philosophy has changed. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, hopefully you've thought about it a little bit. You know, what, what were you like as a young teenage high school athlete kind of doing it all, probably eating it all and uh, mm -hmm. how your philosophy has changed over the course of your career. I assume it's become much more important to you. Just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it's something that's kind of evolved, uh, like Allison was saying, over the past, you know, I feel like for me in the past, uh, you know, maybe five or six years, it's become a, a point of emphasis for me and just understanding that what I what I put into my body is just so important. And then as, I, as you start to become a little bit more self-aware of, of how you're feeling, um, you, you'll start to notice a direct correlation of the foods that you're eating. Um, but, you know, you, you were talking about uh, how I was when I was younger it's funny. I was, uh, I was five to 98 pounds my freshman year in high school. Wow. Um, so I was, I was a scrawny little kid and I, and I know all of my, 
all of my weights all throughout high school because I was a wrestler. So, um, so I was, I wasn't even a hundred pounds my freshman year. And then I graduated at, at about 150 pounds my, uh, my senior year. So I did a good bit of growing in high school. And, um, and then now I weigh almost 210 pounds. So, um, you know, I've continued to gain weight. Uh, I like to think it's mostly good weight. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think for me, the, the emphasis, um, I guess that I would want to impart is, is developing good habits at a young age. Um, I think that it's such a hard thing to develop when, when you're older and you have already have a routine, you already have the habits that, um, that you've been doing for such a long time. I think the earlier that you start to um, put an emphasis on, on what fuel you're putting in your body, um, the better. And I know for me, um, I'm thankful that my parents, um, you know, every, every night we had, um, you know, a solid meal, we had a, you know, a lean meat, we had a good carbohydrate, and then we had a vegetable or two. Um, and not that that's the end all and be all, but um, by and large, I had uh, pretty healthy food available to me um, a lot of the time. And, um, you know, I, I think that that was, uh, that was crucial. As I, as I got older, I knew, uh, oh, yeah, those are foods that I uh, may not like, but I know that I should be eating them. Um, so I've, I've always kind of been the guy that, uh, that I, I had trouble putting on weight until probably the last three or four years. Um, you know, I was like, okay, I got to have uh, peanut butter and jelly and some whole milk before I go to bed, or I got to have a milkshake or, or whatever it may be. So I'm thankful that I, that I have that metabolism where I, you know, I feel like, um, I, I can eat a lot of things and uh, it doesn't necessarily change my weight, but it definitely affects how I feel. Um, you know, uh, Allison, I'm sure you've heard, you know, how many times have you heard calories in, calories out, calories in, calories out. Um, and while that, that formula in some ways might be correct, if I have, if I have 2000 calories of donuts um, a day and I burn 2000 calories a day, that's going to be way, way different than I, if I am eating my, my lean meats, if I'm eating my vegetables and my, you know, my fruit and my eggs and, you know, all those foods that are going to be actually fueling your body, they're productive calories as opposed to the empty calories that you might be getting from, uh, you know, your simple carbohydrates. That's good, Joe. And almost even to piggyback a little bit off this and, and Allison, you probably can sort of chime in on this too, but, you know, even for you, Joe, I think about just to paint the picture of where we started and where you are now. So Westchester, even maybe in high school, you know, and even in the early years as a minor leaguer, you know, as you sort of move up the ladder, I think probably things are easier to get with regards to food. You have more available. I mean, those spreads probably at the major league level. I had it. I went to spring training, and occasionally I'd pop over the major league side, and, man, those spreads were unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I still dream about them every day. I'm not sure you know, Westchester, you know, you have your normal cafeteria. It's a normal D2 school, and at the minor league level, you know, you know, I think it's getting better, and we have people like Allison in place that are going to sort of help promote quality food, but probably really hard. Hey, a bus ride stop, we're stopping at Wendy's, and we're eating, you know, three Baconators and, you know, um, <laughs> you, know you know. So how, how are you still able to maybe still keep those principles in mind despite the circumstances you were in? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's always possible to eat healthy. Um, I think that re regardless of where you are, if it's a point of emphasis for you, um, then you can eat healthy. That being said, there, there are circumstances where it, it may just not be possible. Um, you, all you have before a game sometimes might be, uh, you know, white bread and some peanut butter and jelly. And every once in a while, you just kind of have to throw it down and, and go out and play. Um, but there's so much that a player can control. Um, there, there's so many ways to eat healthy. Um, and I think that if it's something important to you, you'll find a way to do it. Um, a, a player that I've, I've played with actually um, when I was with the athletics and then also when I was, since I've been with the Rays, Jake Smolinski, he would, um, he would carry a duffel bag um, and it would have uh, just all of his health foods. And I remember one time his duffel bag had he had like ice um melting out of the side of it and he had like um raw unfiltered milk sitting in his oh. in his bag. so um you know that that's maybe like a little bit of an extreme um but but my point being is that it was it was very important to him and he made it he made a, a conscious effort to to fuel his body with things that he knew were going to be productive as opposed to things that were just going to be empty um so that that would be my you know my suggestion or I, I guess my my bit on that Nick, is just that if it's important to you you'll find a way to do it thanks awesome awesome
Now, Allison, I'm going to come at you right now. Um, <laughs> in uh, the weight room, so for myself, you know, I, I try to use a little bit of a formula where, or at least I, I try to convey to my kids that, you know, when it comes to selecting, you know, or trying to get stronger, it's not necessarily the fanciness of the exercise or the modality that you're trying to use. It's really the, the habits and the consistency that really promote the results. You know, it's actually, hey, are you going to be in the weight room? Are you going to do repetitively things every day? And that's when you start seeing results. Now, would you, would you say um, that that's similar in, with regards to nutrition, that maybe it's more about the consistency of when we're getting our meals, um, the habits of actually wanting to eat and get better, rather than, rather than actually what we're eating, like why we're eating and all, all that types of stuff. You know, I think, you know, I think those habits and consistency are important. What would you say about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, and the consistency thing is, is spot on. And one of the things that I would always, I would talk to my students about, and it's a little, it's different in baseball because there's a game every single day, but <clears throat> with the students, I'm like, you can't do everything right on Monday through Friday and then sleep till two o'clock on Saturday, have a bowl of cereal at four and then a pizza at seven. And then that is your normal on Saturday and Sunday. So Weekends are days too. <laughs> so the consistency is a hundred percent important. And so, you know, Monday through Friday are good, but you can't weigh what you want to weigh on Friday and then show up back to square one on Monday when you get on the scale again. Um, especially for, you know, any of your athletes that are trying to gain weight, but you know, the quality does matter for sure. But I think where a lot of people get caught up is the, like, I have to be plant-based or I'm going to be vegan now, or I want to not eat nightshades or I'm gluten-free. And I think that's what can get people in trouble is, you know, the quality of food is important. The consistency is important. How fancy it is, like you said, is not like you don't have, we are not like all medical mysteries and we all need some sort of special different diet um, yeah. to, to perform our best. We just need a really good fueling strategy that works for us. Right. That's good. <clears throat> yeah. That, uh, concept of consistency and habits, you know, I've book I'm reading recently talked about like missing once, you know, is bad, but you just try really hard when you're building a habit to never miss twice or two days in a row or, you know, two cheat meals <laughs> in a row or whatever. Yeah. But, um, really, really good stuff. Um, this leads into just, you know, uh, a concept that, that means a lot to me is that like performance gap concept. So you, you know where you want to be, you kind of understand where you are. How do you fill the gap? Whether that's, uh, you know, gain weight, lose weight, gain strength. And then, uh, Joey, even to you in terms of performance, like how much do you value this topic in like making small strides and even your ability to play baseball and focus and get in yeah. shape. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. And I, I, for me, I know that it starts with self-evaluation, understanding, um, you know, the, the type of player that I am. If we're talking, you know, strictly from a baseball standpoint, um, understanding what my limitations are, understanding what my, what my strengths are. Um, and then I guess this could be applied to everything, um, you know, nutrition, strength and conditioning, and also baseball. But um, you know, like you said, um, taking a step back at the end of every season or taking a step back at the beginning of the off season and saying to yourself, okay, um, where did I struggle last year? Um, what were areas where I feel like I, I need to get better at? Um, and then also, you know, taking time to, to realize where, where you have grown areas that you maybe struggled in in the past. And, um, you really took a big leap in that, in that past year or something along those lines. So I think um, just having a self-awareness and being able to be honest with yourself is probably the first step in, um, in recognizing that performance gap. Um, and then once you have identified the areas where, where, you, where you want to be um, and you know that you're not, um, you, got, you got to come up with some kind of a plan. Um, I can't just say that I want to throw harder and just will myself to do it. You know, I can't just say, hey, I want to, you know, I want my balls to have a little bit more carry on them as I throw them across the infield um, and then just bench press and do curls all off season. I have to actually, you know, do a little bit of research. I have to find out the, the, the exact plan that I want to take, um, you know, to, to do that. And, um, and then from there, for me, it's, uh, it's the small things. It's, it's the little steps and um, it's sticking to it and it's being consistent uh, with what your, what your goal was. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and and I've noticed for me that I mean the little things over a long season make a huge huge difference. Um, the little things over an off season make a huge huge difference. And if you can just continue to chip away and chip away um, and keep that focus um, and keep that intensity um, mm-hmm. towards towards your specific goal that you've already outlined. Um, for me, that's how I've seen areas of of my performance that, you know, I wasn't quite happy with the areas where I feel like our strengths now. You said something really important there, and I don't want, especially our athletes or, or anyone to miss that. It's those little things. Like you can't get, you can get a 1%, right? I can, I can go mm-hmm. home and eat a half gallon of ice cream today. I'm not 300 pounds tomorrow. However, <laughs> if I do it every night for the next 30 days, there's a highly high likelihood I might be, but um, it goes the other way too, right? A little bit, a little bit of consistency, a little bit better habit and you start to kind of chip away. Uh, of course, yeah. I'm a little bit older and I also read literally that, uh, you know, men gain what two pounds a year. on <laughs> So uh, you either let it happen or, you know, you build a habit that, that kind of gets you going the other way. Um, so Allison, staying on the topic of habits, I have a, a 14 year old daughter, soon to be 15. And so um, if you break down healthy habits to like, the knowledge of a high school female freshman or sophomore, you know, what's kind of the elevator speeds to, to start to build healthy habits um, as a young athlete who is just starting to kind of figure this out? Yeah. Well, first I would say we're not building healthy habits. We're learning how to fuel properly. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I stand and, corrected. That's yes. Amazing. So, and I do think that's important, especially for, for both boys and girls, but for females too, because the stigma of like healthy means I'm on a diet, which means I have to look a certain way, which means I'm going to perform better. And so eliminating all those, like, it must mean this, it must mean this. And so that's one of the things where, um, just as a teacher, getting all the students to speak on fueling and it's fun to hear them. I don't think, I can't remember the last time I've heard any of them say healthy eating. And so, but with the girls, just teaching them like, um, yeah, the consistency is important for sure. Some of the things with um, high schoolers, high school females especially, um, they don't like to eat a lot during the day because they like to feel lighter and because they just, I mean, that's just kind of their thing. And then they overeat at night. And so I try to get them to understand flipping that switch. So eating most of your calories earlier in the day so that when you get to the evening, you feel like I could have something. And this really goes for the general population too. Um, So when you get to the dinner time, you could have something, but you're not like looking for the candy and the cookies and the sweets because you're so exhausted and hungry from depriving yourself all day. And what I always tell um, athletes, students, whoever, uh, if you are craving those carbs in like the super sweet, sugary, fatty stuff at night, that's your brain's way of being like, you didn't really do a great job today. So now I'm mad at you and this is what I'm going to go for. And so, you know, for, for teenage girls, that's, I think it's so important for them to understand that in that as teenage, like teenage female athletes too, like building muscle is good. Building muscle is important. You didn't just go burn calories just to burn calories. Now you have to put them back in so that you can build some muscle and get stronger for the next day. Um, so those are some of the basic principles, like, you know, it's, it's okay to eat as a female in high school. It really is. Yeah, that, that's so good. I mean, my, you know, brain is getting flipped, which is why you're so great to have on this call. It's such great advice. <laughs> I wrote it down. I hope everyone else did. Uh, <laughs> re- really good, really good, informative, educational, educational yeah. concepts right there. Good that's stuff. Awesome. Yeah. And, and yeah, especially just with the, the whole concept with, um, you know, um, b- girls building muscle in high school, like that's, that's important. You know, that it's needs, pretty you know, big deal, you know? Um, deal. and, uh, no, Alison, I, I really appreciate that. Um, but, uh, okay, Joe, so here's another one for you. Um, and this, this encapsulates a little bit nutrition. I think it, it also encapsulates just a, a lot of different things in general. I would just say in recovery, but you know, mm-hmm. The sport of baseball in general, especially for you on a normal year, other than the situation that we're in right now, um, <laughs> playing 162 games a year, or you, or you need to be able to. And so, you know, a lot of times I think baseball in particular has this concept of the grind. Like every day you have to be ready to play. And a lot of people really don't understand that. 
I was fortunate enough to be in minor league baseball for three years. And even then I was like, wow, like just the toll it takes for these guys to come out and play and expect to perform on a daily basis is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, and I think for a lot of high school, um, athletes in general, they had this concept of, I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to do more. I need to do this. I need to do that. And a lot of times I think it might be manifesting. I got to lift more. I got to sprint more. I got to, I got to run till I, I throw up, you know, almost like in pain infliction where it's like, if it doesn't hurt me, then it's not working where I think a lot of times, and maybe this is really where I want you to sort of focus on is, you know, the nutrition aspect, the, um, how you regulate your sleep, um, even like meditation and the mental aspect of the game. Like those are the types of PRs that I think a lot of kids don't understand that actually in season are probably the most important thing. I remember a strength coach saying to me, especially for high school kids was like, Hey, if you're not hydrating every day properly, eating or sleeping, whatever you do other than that doesn't matter. So just to maybe go a little bit into that, Joe, especially on a, on a 162 game year, how those things are so important. Yeah, um, no, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And, and you're right in saying that, um, that baseball is, is unique in that you're playing, um, you know, basically for six months straight. Um, you know, if there's, you know, every weekend, you know, th there's hardly any off days. Maybe, maybe one a week uh, in the minor league is probably closer to two a month. Um, so, so you're playing every single day. Um, and, and, you know, what you described um, early on is, you know, the tendency to, like, man, like I, I have got to continue to get stronger. I've got to continue to get faster. Um, that is such a, it's such a good mindset to have um, because, because you're always striving, you, you, you know, there's, there's never a stop button. Um, and, and I love that. And that's like, that's kind of the way that I was raised as well. Like I, I had mentioned before that I was a wrestler. So like my mentality was like, no excuses. Like I'm going to go at this a hundred percent. I'm going to be sprinting from day one. I'm going to be sprinting on day 162. Um, and that was just kind of how I was going to do it, whether I got tired or not, whether it was going to make me better or not. Um, and then after I did that for a couple of years in the minor leagues, um, my body started to get a little bit tired, um, which is, uh, you know, something that I hadn't really experienced before, but, you know, I started getting, I know it's not old, but I, you know, when I was 26, 27, I was like, oh man, like, you know, I'm a little sore here. I'm a little sore there. Maybe I shouldn't be, you know, maybe I shouldn't be maxing out squatting uh in july so um those are those are concepts that i had to learn um as i went on um, and i even had people tell me hey joe you, you gotta slow down like you know it's just not a sustainable pace um and and what i've really gathered from that is um you don't necessarily um have to work any less hard it's just more so that you have to work with a purpose um now that that's one of the things that I've taken from so many of the guys that I've played with um, is is the purpose um, that they come to the field with. They they have a plan and they understand how they want to accomplish that um, accomplish what they're they're trying to get done that day. Um, I play with guys. Um, it seems like from from the moment they walk into the clubhouse until they leave that afternoon uh, or that night at 10, 30, 11 o'clock they were doing something with a purpose, um, whether it was getting a lift in that day or sprinting, um, but they were eating with a purpose. A lot of those guys um, will go and take a nap, um, not because they're lazy, but because they, they feel like that fuels them the best way possible. Um, so, so what I would say, um, you know, for somebody who has that, that so-called grinder mentality, I would say keep it um, because that's something that's not easily taught. But I would also just encourage you to, to ask yourself the question, uh, okay, why am I doing this? Um, and is it making me um, a better athlete? Is it making me a better football player? Is this exercise making me a better baseball player? Um, and that's something that I'm, that I'm constantly asking myself in season, out of season, um, you know, in season, the question is, is more geared toward is this exercise or is what I'm doing right now, going to make me perform better tonight um, and in the off season the question becomes is this making me better at baseball um, so I think you can you can be a really hard worker and I think you can have really good workouts and you know go really hard in the weight room um, while also being smart about things and understanding hey maybe if I'm going to get a good lift in I should have an off day the next day or maybe if I'm going to have an off day um, you know I'll take two off days whatever it may be just make sure that you're doing it with a purpose um, so that, that's kind of what I've had to learn um, throughout playing uh, 
I guess, parts of eight seasons of, of professional baseball. Um, yeah. Really good. Joe, you don't get where you got or where you are without being purposeful and intentional. And that's probably so many distractions, right? I'm, I'm the old dude in the room who's like, when I grew up, we didn't have this stuff. <laughs> but, you know, you still have to be intentional about your time. I mean, I, I have kind of a buzzword that like, you know, if you're really living a life of purpose, like Colossians 3.23 talks about, giving 100% to where your feet are, what you're doing right now, it's like, you should never be bored. You should rest on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. You should fuel, leave my word there, you should fuel on purpose <laughs> and train on purpose and even, you know, socialize and be, be a community member with your family and other people. So that concept of being intentional and purposeful is, uh, is, is perfectly. Um, I do want to sneak this in before we get to some questions um, to Allison. Just with um, you know, our core values here, here at Second Baptist and uh, athletic department specifically is you know, we want to be Christ-centered. We want kids to understand who they are uh, as a child of God and where their motivation comes from. And so weaving that into everything we do and then striving for excellence, right? We don't, we don't want to be terrible. We can love Jesus and love each other and be terrible. And um, we don't represent that, that first core value well. And the third one is community. So when it comes to just like a, a biblical view of striving for excellence, I really want to be good at this. But I also want to have a proper view of, you know, what role my body plays in my acts of service or my giftedness. You know, maybe just speak real quickly about, um, you know, but just body image, being a child of God. Uh, whether male, female, I mean, we all care about it. So uh, from your perspective and, and where you've been, a little bit about that. Yeah, and I thought a lot about this question. And so, you know, I know everybody wants like the perfect scripture for like performance and food. And, you know, you can go in the Bible and find all kinds. And, you know, of course, we've all heard, um, you know, your body is a temple and, and sure. And, but that obviously is more as it pertains to purity and that sort of thing. But we could, say, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your body, fuel well, exercise, all those things. But I think in the grander scheme of all of that, it's how you're treating other people. Um, If you're, you know, getting recruited by power five schools and, you know, how are you acting around your friends? Are you humble? Are you still a good teammate? How do you act when someone steals your starting job? How do you act when you steal someone else's starting job? Um, and so am I, is that, was I cutting out? My internet said it was on good. Sorry. Good. Okay. Um, but yeah, so just the biblical view, I think it just, it's so much kind of what we've been talking about. It's intentional. It's being an example. It's showing, um, Christ through your actions in the way that you, um, you know, you take care of yourself, the way that you treat others, the way that you treat your parents and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, I just feel like it's more global than just like, here's a verse in scripture that says that you need to fuel properly to, you know, perform well. And you can also serve Christ in the meantime, like we can do all those things um, for sure. Uh, But there's not, for me, there's just not one thing, one scripture that stands out. It's just as, as a coach and as a mentor and as a teacher, I want the kids to see me treating the starting you know, center the same as I treat the freshman who's 98 pounds and five, two, <laughs> you know, who's like, how do I bench press, you know, or, you know, like I don't eat vegetables or whatever they're talking about. So, um, and I feel like that has helped me through the years, um, just with some of the things that former athletes have said, you know, um, you never treated me like a walk on. And so I think, mm-hmm. you know, those are some of the things where I feel like I've been able to show Christ and, and be a good example, um, to others. And I think I just encourage the students to do the same. Like, how are you when nobody's looking? Because mm-hmm. that's when we can really show, um, who we are in, in Christ. Really good. And, and your value, you know, Joey and anyone who's been an athlete knows that when you play for the compliments of others and you hope that people like see your progress you're just disappointed all the time so just understanding where your confidence comes from you know who who you're trying to be and then pushing as hard as you can to get there all right a couple couple rapid fire questions here at the end we have some some questions that were um you know geared more toward athletes that were given 
So, um, you know, here lunch is about 1230. You're playing at three o'clock. You haven't eaten for a while. You know, what's a practical tip, Allison, for like, what should I get in me on my way to practice? Or even if I'm on the, on the way to a game, I haven't eaten since lunch and maybe I didn't even like lunch so much. So what can I get in me before I have to go practice or play a game? Yeah. So the biggest thing here is to pack an emergency stash of whatever. And so um, it's, you know, <laughs> granola bars, it's trail mix, it's peanut butter crackers. It's just the gyp to go um, peanut butters. I mean, just pack an emergency stash of stuff. And I would tell my students this in um, last fall, <laughs> I had one kid that poured Chex Mix, trail mix, and some cereal in one giant Ziploc bag. And he just carried that around and ate it. And I'm like, I don't even care. Like you did what I told you. So like, you know, I have an emergency stash in my car. So for parents that are out there, if you have to pick your kid up and you're going from point A to point B, you know, here is two packs of peanut butter crackers, some trail mix and a bottle of water. And so we're in a better spot than we were if we had nothing. And if we went through the drive through. So Great. to me, that's the biggest thing is you have to have that emergency backup supply of food because you don't know what lunch looks like. Being prepared, <laughs> keep it in your yes. locker, keep plan it in your ahead. bag, plan yep. ahead. Because if not, you get what's available. We do have a little coffee shop on campus so you can get a scone or something. With, you know, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, Joe. All right, Joe, game day meal. What's your, do you have a go-to game day meal, maybe even superstitious? Or do you just have like mm -hmm. concepts of like, you know, you know, is there something that you eat? You're like, I'm getting three hits tonight. No, no, I, I don't have anything that I'm like, I'm dead set on having for every game. Um, I mean, thankfully right now we got, you know, awesome chefs who are making, you know, awesome, awesome meals that I am very thankful for. Um, and they make it super easy to eat healthy and fuel up for the game. Yeah. Um, but I am a peanut butter and jelly guy. Yeah. I can have peanut butter and jelly whole week. Um, I mean, every day for the rest of my life. I love it. Um, and you know, jelly that, first that, or peanut butter first, what, what goes on first? What's that? Jelly first or peanut butter first and both. Oh, I mean, it's, side it's, or it's peanut side? butter on one side and then strawberry jelly on the other. Oh, <laughs> jelly. That's the right, that's the correct way. So. <laughs> peanut, peanut butter jelly time. Okay. Either of you, um, <laughs> Screen time, sleep, blue light glasses. What time should I go to bed? How much does that really affect my performance at Nick Massioli's weight training sessions? <laughs> it's huge. I mean, sleep is huge. And that's one of the things that I focus on a lot. Um, I did a ton with sleep when I was at Tennessee. Um, we spend a week in class talking about it. And then I hit, hit it really hard with the, the Pirates as well. And so... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with baseball, it's tough. And Joey, you know, this, you get done with a game at 11, 1130. It's not like you're going to bed at midnight. You know, there's a wind down time and, you know, some guys, yeah, they want to play video games to wind down. Cool. Like that. I get it. And so making those adjustments based on like what someone needs in order to wind down and just kind of like regain their thoughts and then the wake up time. So, I mean, eight hours I would love for every student athlete whoever adult whatever to get eight hours um, your high school athletes and just high school kids in general if they could get nine that would be exceptional um, and that's I mean there's tons of research on sleep and grades and you know attendance at school and, and that sort of thing um, about two to eleven is that still good two a.m. to does so, it which nine hours that's so your, here's that's so rhythm. that's circadian rhythm, right, Allison? There's yeah. So here's the thing. Interesting about that. So um, typically, like high school kids, their natural circadian clock is later than what ours is as older adults. And so, you know, it's tough when we wish our kids would go to bed at like ten, and they're like, "But I'm not tired, and it's midnight." Mm -hmm. That's normal. Like that's we don't love it, but that's just where their bodies are naturally set. And so they don't, they're not wired to get up at 6 a.m. like we are. And so um, it is a little tricky to understand. 2 to 11, I don't love it. Would I prefer 12 to, you know, yeah. 9? Yeah, that'd be a lot better. But, um, but yeah, it's a little bit tricky because you want to make sure your teenager is getting enough sleep. You have to understand that they're not wired to go to bed early, but then also you're like, isn't it time for bed yet? Yeah. So you have to go. You know, I played basketball, and um, I think my dad told me, you only grow in your sleep, so you should go to bed, son. <laughs> yeah, I tell my kids that too. You grow in sure. your sleep? You grow yeah. in your sleep? Well, that's when you release growth hormones, so yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. Technically, and uh, yes. I floored a couple, you know, Division One facilities and professional facilities who are putting in sleep rooms or yep. sleep chambers because guys go out, kids stay up, even college kids. So, you know, creating an environment and making sure they're, you know, spending time doing that. Yeah. Um, one, one plug, Mike, for everyone that's watching this right now and then whoever does on YouTube, if you want to read a phenomenal book on sleep, it's called Why We Sleep. <laughs> by Matthew Walker. It was, it's a life-changing book. It will change your life. Read that book. It's amazing. It will give you like amazing stuff. Read it. Nick's getting a, uh, you know, a little kickback kick on that. <laughs> All right. Last, last question. Then I'm going to close with a final thought. Coffee and caffeine. All right. We all love it. Kids, I'm at it, Joey. And you can, you can start. Joey, you start. I was going to say, do you, want, do you want my opinion or do you want the correct opinion? Um, <laughs> there we go. Joey, give it to us. Yeah, go Okay, so I, I'm, I'll I'm, fix I'm, what you say. I'm, I'm a big fan of caffeine. Um, the, the, the things that I'll say about caffeine is um, you, don't just, you don't just get like a pass. Um, you don't just get to drink as much coffee as you want whenever you want um, because we all know that your body will start to depend on it. We all know those headaches that start to creep in. If you're starting to get headaches from from coffee, um, that's that's usually a uh, you know that's that's a pretty bad sign. Uh, that being said, I have coffee first thing in the morning. Um, I try to limit my intake. I try I always drink it black, and I try to only have it in the Good morning. So I try not to have any after um, you know after noon, um, unless you know I'm really dragging that day or I got a I got a heavy leg day. I'm not going to start till four o'clock, and I need to get a little mm -hmm. go a little bit before uh, before I lift. That would that would be my take on it. Huge right. fan always black <laughs> yeah there is there is a lot of really good legitimate research on caffeine and performance but it's also very intentional and meticulous and so it's not something where you know the kids who are drinking energy drinks and then taking pre-workout before a football game or a basketball game that's not what it's intended for and that's not the performance benefit you know right. if you really want to take a look at it you have to essentially withdraw and then calculate specifically how many milligrams per kilogram you need. So, so there's, it's a very, you can be very precise with it. Um, but if you're just, you know, drinking coffee drinks all day and, you know, having, like I said, the energy drinks and, you know, getting as much caffeine as you can, because you think one, like you feel cool and you get itchy or, you know, the muscle pump or whatever you're getting, um, that's not the right reason. So, um, but yeah, I mean, coffee is like, I mean, that's like, the you know the yeah. basically the mascot in baseball is coffee so. sure, <laughs> sure. And I, like i said we have you know kind of a coffee shop on campus here and it's you know there's even some young like you know middle Ugh. school kids getting coffee after school and so i just wanted to hit that so bad so bad like of starting starting kind of early on the coffee Stop. binge Stop. no i mean i have it drilled in my kids heads like you will be short and you won't grow if you drink coffee so end of story <laughs> my dad told so. me that too yes <laughs> God. yes <laughs> well yeah i appreciate it just uh just a closing thought um just kind of tie some things together in a book i read uh, not too long ago atomic habits we talked about habits a little bit James Clear, the author, says, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. No single instance will transform, transform your beliefs, but the votes kind of build up. You know, as you establish a new identity, you want to just kind of like chip away at the person that you want to become. And the earlier you start to fuel your body properly and get sleep and limit your screen time and just make good, good decisions uh, that are best for you and your health and wellness is kind of where we are. So we've had you know, just great information about um, nutrition, healthy sleep habits. Our first webinar way back then with Cecil Shorts and Brandon Cooks talked about just making the most of your time, even during quarantine. And then our most recent one with uh, Andy Pettit and a couple other baseball guys, just on, um, you know, intentional work, you know, growing, growing to love your sport as a dad, as a young athlete. And so um, the, guy, the people on this call, step one, you listen to it, like you're soaking in the information, right? Then next is to set some goals and turn those goals into habits and start to build the things that we've been talking about. But um, the stuff of living a victorious life, I'd love to just close and close and uh, pray for you guys and your career paths and your families and uh, the rest of us here at Second Baptist. So let me just have a word of prayer for us. God, thank you for uh, Allison and Joe and uh, Nick and the opportunity we had to just talk about uh, the way that you've created our bodies 
uh, to want to strive to, to do better and to, uh, to achieve as much as possible as we can. Lord, pray that we learn some things and we would set those goals and uh, depend on you to just create really good habits in our life so that we could honor you and serve you with our whole heart. Uh, be with Allison and her family. Uh, bless her and uh, the career that you have for her uh, with the Pirates and with her high school and Joe too as well as he looks forward to getting back on the field and uh, praising and glorifying you with, uh, with his efforts there. Give us a great evening. Thank you for what you do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Thank all. you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for your yeah. time. And yeah. uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Yeah. You guys have a good night. Enjoy that. See you guys. All right. Thanks. Bye.